Peter Thomas Fornital back with you on the In The Money Media YouTube channel. Thrilled to be joined by a man who you know from such shows as uh, the Twin Spires. Jury does a fantastic job covering racing over there, twinspires.com. Darren Sokali. Darren, how are things? Doing good, man. Doing good. We're filled up with turkey from yesterday. I uh, watched some horrendous football for about seven oh. hours. Oh. And, uh, you know, ready to get back to the world of horse racing, which is far more entertaining than watching the New York football giants. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started. That, that, that's a whole other podcast. Yes. Um, big weekend. As you mentioned, we've got so much stuff going on. We'll start by mentioning that the, the sponsor of today's video, Twin Spires Tournaments. If you go to TwinSpires.com and click on the Tournaments tab, you can see the full schedule of events I know you've talked about this on the podcast side, but we haven't talked about it here on YouTube yet. New big contest happening in December once the Turfway Park meet kicks off. Why don't you tell us about the, what the idea was behind this new event? Give us some give us some of the details. Then we're going to talk about some of these stakes races on Saturday at Churchill. Yeah, well, kind of inspired a little bit by what Keeneland does with the grade one gamble and, and the fall challenge that they do. Uh, and we thought, you know, uh, Turfway Park has become such a popular signal in the winter time that uh, we could build a really lucrative tournament around that uh, that meet and what we did was we put together a two thousand dollar buy-in tournament 1500 to your bankroll 500 to the prize pool we're going to give out one kentucky derby betting challenge seat uh, for every 10 participating players and on top of that we are going to be adding ten thousand dollars in prize money to the pool so in other words $10,000 starting in the prize pool in addition to the seats. And then based on how, how many entries we get, there could also be some additional prize money on top of it. But we're throwing 10000 in there, the KDBC seats. We've got feeders and qualifiers leading up to it. Of course, the qualifiers will start with the Turfway, Downs, uh, Turfway Park meet uh, next Wednesday as well. But uh, it's kind of modeled off of the Grade 1 Gamble, Keeneland Fall Challenge. Just uh, And we're going to do it on December the 14th, which, of course, is their night that they announced for their synthetic championships, which should be a great night of racing. So it kind of just all came together, fell into place. It's a little bit of an in-between time in the calendar for racing. So I'll admit, a little bit nervous because I don't know, you know, interest level in racing in mid-December is not what it is in other parts of the year. But if we put together a lucrative enough package, I think it works, and I think we've done that. The success you've had in this foray into tournaments, this latest one that you've been, you know, really a big part of at Twin Spires suggests to me it's going to do well. Speaking of contests, Saturday, probably saw it up on screen. I'll pop it up here again. There is a $400 qualifier uh, on these Churchill races we're going to be talking about for the Kentucky Derby betting challenge. This new major that so much is going to be building to as we start on the road to the first Saturday in May. But before we talk about the first Saturday in May, let's talk about the first Friday in May. Uh, the, the Kentucky Oaks, we've got a really interesting race that could be a key pointer to that, given that it's happening right there at Churchill under the Twin Spires. Race number nine on Saturday is the Goldenrod. Great to action for these two-year-old fillies going a mile and a 16th. It's a field of seven, but I think my cheeky way of asking you your opinion in here, uh, which Brad Cox runner do you like? I was going to say, my, my opinion is that the Kentucky Oaks might be the Brad Cox Invitational next year <laughs> with his two-year-old Philly string. Uh, look, um, you know, of the two, good cheer is the one that I'm more confident in going around two turns. I mean, how do you knock anything that she's done? She's won three races by a combined 30 lengths. They've all been around two turns. She's won over a sloppy sealed track. She's won over a fast track. She makes a menacing middle move and then just kind of breaks uh, her competition's heart in the stretch. Uh, I mean, she could be anything at this point. I mean, it should be no surprise being out of Wedding Toast, out of Medallia d'Oro. Uh, she's akin to two stakes winners as well. There's just plenty to like. And uh, of the two, with Eclatant stretching out around two turns for the first time, she's by Into Mischief out of a Scat Daddy Mare. You can make the argument that maybe, you know, the mile could be pushing the envelope a little bit for her, whereas Good Cheer you know, as the type of pedigree that might be able to run a mile and a half. So um, of the two, good cheer is the more accomplished, the more proven, the more proven around two turns. I give her the uh, the nod between the two Brad Cox runners. I will put in one shout. It's not like I'm bringing in a price here, but one potential 
betting approach, maybe to try to split those Cox runners in the exact or maybe even a little bit on the win side. I still think quiet side might be a little bit better than she's shown on the track so far. Tends to be running a little bit inefficiently, a little keyed up early in these races. I think if she could just ration out her speed a little bit more, that was a bit of a tricky trip in the Alcibiades. Obviously, uh, immersive and quick kick did something for the form in there with their runs in the juvenile Phillies. I'm not completely ruling out quiet side as an alternative to those two, or certainly a vertical player to go with the Cox runners. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about on this show, Darren, we've got the Kentucky Derby future bet this weekend. There is an option for one of the 40 choices is for all the the three-year-old Phillies next year. Uh, Who knows? With a big performance, maybe one of these could put themselves uh, from the goldenrod onto the the scene in there. But uh, far more likely this next race where I think about five of the runners in the Kentucky Jockey Club are going to be participating. But curious if you've had a go in this future wager yet or to to get any thoughts you, you have on it. It feels like year in, year out, there are some opportunities with these future bets, and they're just a fun way of uh, putting the Derby front and center, even though we are heading into December here. Any thoughts for you on this year's future wager, which folks can find, obviously, over at uh, TwinSpires.com? Yeah, this is a little early for me. I do take part in the future wagers. Um, This one's a little bit early because... I mean, at this point, you know, any of these horses in the next four or five months can jump up with a monster race where they go from being 80 to one to, to 12 to one. Um, I, I did. I did get lucky last year in uh, in betting Torpedo Anna and the Kentucky Oaks future wager. And I think I got something to the effect of 15 or 16 to one on her. Um, and I actually bet for every young in a free future wager as well. Oh, uh, so we almost. We almost hit both of them in a future wager, which might have been my greatest betting accomplishment of all time. Um, yeah, and, and this particular one, there, there's several in here that I think are interesting. Um, the one that I kind of looked at a little bit was Mo Quality um, by Motown. Uh, this one is only sprinted so far uh, for trainer Chris Davis. Yet to see exactly what this horse is going to do when stretching out, uh, but just did win last week. And I was pretty impressed. I thought it was a visually impressive performance. I thought his debut was a very impressive runner-up performance as well, considering where he had to come from. So, uh, I mean, he's going to probably be like 80 to 1 or so. So I thought he had a little bit uh, of appeal. I mean, at this point, if you're going six months out, you got to make sure you're, you know, you're getting a price. You can't take a horse at 18 to 1 six months before a race. Yes, yes. It, it's very unlikely that that's going to end up being value. But, yeah, there's bombs to look at. It's interesting you mentioned Mo Quality. I noticed – I was doing a little scan of the morning line prices for the future wager, and the price is currently on offer internationally. And it was some sneaky international money for Mo Quality. That was something that I that I know some somebody out there agrees with you that that might be an interesting runner. So you can bet on that through. I think it closes at the end, maybe seven o'clock on Saturday night. Folks want to check that out. Obviously, probably smartest to see what happens in the race we're about to talk about first which is the Kentucky Jockey Club. I would imagine the solid favorite in here is going to be number two, Jonathan's Way. I do think you can offer an excuse for that Breeders' Cup Juvenile, a race where the complexion changed when East Avenue didn't break and it became kind of a procession for the Baffert duo of uh, Citizen Bull and Gaming. He's back here in a spot where there appears to be plenty of other speed, might take some beating, but I think you might have a more clever idea or two to put forward. But I'll start by asking it this way, Darren. Are you with or against Jonathan's way in the Kentucky Jockey Club? Yeah, I'm against. Um, I, typically, I try to play against these horses coming out of the Breeders' Cup. I, I mean, he didn't do much running that day. Um, he didn't have a bad trip by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe just a little bit off his game that particular day. Maybe he didn't want to be as far back. Um, and obviously, as you said, once East Avenue didn't break, the complexion of that race changed dramatically. It was a very strange race in the fact that you know, nobody really did much running at all outside of the top two, I thought. So um, I don't really know exactly what to do with that. But, I mean, he was impressive in his first two starts for sure, but a little bit dubious off that Breeders' Cup Juvenile where I just thought he really didn't pick up his feet much. Um, I thought Tistastic was interesting in here, a horse that ran second in the street sense after getting off to a little bit of a lackluster beginning. I like his versatility. I mean, this is a horse that's run well over the Kentucky Downs surface twice, winning there. Now, typically when you see those Kentucky Downs horses, they're more horse for the course type. But the fact that he came out of that to run second in the street sense – 
I thought was pretty interesting. Um, so this horse, I think, is versatile, has a lot of ability. And the other horse that really caught my eye was Sonic Skedaddle, who came from absolutely out of the clouds to win last time out at Churchill. They did go pretty quick up front, 45 and 3 to the half. But this horse had all kinds of trouble early on, was stumbling at the start, got sandwiched in between runners, and just finished completely full of run that day. So I, I thought coming out of that performance, he was a bit interesting. He's getting a new pilot today in Tyler Gaffleone as well. Uh, and you really can't get much of a new, better new addition than that. Um, six to one. We'll see if he was a one hit wonder off that maiden win, but I thought he had some appeal. Interesting. I have a maybe half clever idea too here. I respect Jonathan's way. I'm scared of him. But I thought render judgment had a look that I wanted to pay attention to maybe more for underneath than on top in this spot. But, you know, we've got last year's uh, Derby winning duo back with this one. Now, to be fair, Mystic Dan had popped a much bigger figure sprinting in the first two starts, but then, you know, really did seem to take another step up when uh, when when getting a, a, a route of ground. This rendered judgment, the couple of races he's run just around the 78 on the buyer speed figure mark, but some of these recent drills from this horse do suggest that maybe a step forward is in order. I think it'll be a decent price in this race on Saturday. Maybe one to look at for verticals. This is one who's going to be in the future wager as well. If the price gets big enough, and, you know, I probably would want something. Uh, and, and I guess this is the problem is if he runs well here, it'd have to probably be a subtle bad trip to get the kind of price that I'd want in the future wager, which would be something on the order of, you know, 80, 90, 100 to one. But I thought it was a little bit of an interesting runner and in what promises to be a fantastic day of racing at Churchill. Darren, really appreciate you coming on here. We'll be having you back. Uh, in the Money Media YouTube channel. We encourage people to subscribe, leave us a comment as to who you like in these races as well. And we'll be hearing from you, my friend, on the podcast side as well. You can see right there at the track seven. That's where to check you out on Twitter. Anything else you want to uh, plug or promote before we wrap things here today? Uh, just keep coming back to the Twin Spires tournament page. We've got, uh, we talked about that Turfway tournament. We have Kentucky Derby betting challenge qualifiers throughout December, uh, the last weekend of December. We're going to have an NHC KDBC qualifier again. That contest had 71 players in it uh, last weekend. So a lot of popularity there, getting down to the last couple of months to qualify for NHC. And we're still going to have a couple of qualifiers there before the big tournament in February. But uh, yeah, definitely keep coming back to the Twin Spires tournament page because you're just going to see that keep expanding. Uh, and definitely excited to really get the road to the Kentucky Derby and with the KDBC uh, rolling along. Twinspires.com, the place to check it out. If you're not aware of what's going on with this contest program, you should be. Some of the best opportunities out there with things like seeded pools, opportunities to opt into promotions, get some money back. It's, it's where it's at right now with tournaments. Speaking of tournaments, contestjockey.com. That's another website I want to send folks to. Free contests for Hong Kong this week. One for Wednesday, early morning, and one for the HKIR races. Big group one action Saturday night into Sunday morning. You play in those events for free and check out the full schedule of events over at contestjockey.com. You go to twinspires.com and Contest Jockey. We'll keep you playing and having fun all winter long. Till the next time, Darren, great having you here on the In The Money Media YouTube channel.